Google Forms in order to gather information about your potential customers, about those people that are a part of your audience so you can better inform your marketing, you can create more sales, you can have a better marketing message fit. That is what I'm covering today. Okay, so let's get right into it. All you gotta do is basically Google, Google Forms, and it will come up with one of the first, you know, first or second result. And you can see here, you can basically use free application, which is Google, in order to create personal survey forms. And also if you want to, you could use Typeform or you could use SurveyMonkey or those kinds of tools. But today we're just focusing on Google Forms. And basically, how do you set up one of these things? Um, and how do you collect and gather customer data leading up to a launch? So what we're gonna do here, you could create a blank form if you want to. I would recommend going with a template. You can just do a very simple customer feedback form. Now, the reason why we're doing this, again, is to get as much information about your customers as humanly possible so that you can tailor your marketing messages and also so you have a really clear sense of who is on your list, who is a part of your tribe. And in that way, you can um, better orient your marketing and also you have a better sense of people that are gonna convert, right, when you actually announce a product or announce a launch. So first of all, um, if we're gonna be collecting emails, you don't have to. I'd recommend putting this at the top here if you want to, but um, you can select with each individual item, the um, email address, um, if we wanna have it be a required answer or not, you could do that. I'm actually gonna remove this email here because I wanna have this form actually be something that's anonymous. And the reason why um, initially I usually do an anonymous survey is because it allows you to get really honest feedback from people when they know it's anonymous, they're not gonna be gathering, people don't know um, know that you're not gonna be like tracking down who they are or something like that. So having an anonymous feedback is a really a way to get honest feedback, but also when you do another survey, if you want to, you could gather their email address and then that gives you a lot of leeway to reach out to those people again, but just make sure you do that. So here I'm just gonna change to say, we'd love to hear your thoughts or feedback. And I'm gonna say, this is a an anonymous, survey. Now, in order for people to understand what it is that we're doing, we probably got to change this image here. So I just have a preloaded image um, that I'm going to put here. Let's just say it's like an ab roller. It's basically going to be something that's like, um, if you're into fitness, it's, it's, if you're into um, working out, this would basically be a Bowflex product. Um, and it's not, it's not in any way kind of perfectly designed. I'm just using this as an example. Okay. So this is going to be here and we're gonna insert this. Once that inserts, it changes its theme color and all that. If we want to, we could change some of the styling here. I'm not too big into, I'm not a designer, obviously. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. But the one thing I will change is I'll change this customer feedback. So I'd rather have this be something named related to what people are gonna recognize, so a brand name. So let's just say this is gonna be like the Fit Ab Roll Ab Machine 2.0 or something, the 2000, right? Um, so people know what this is. We would love to hear what your thought or feedback is. This is an anonymous survey. Now, this is really when we're getting into the meat and potatoes of asking questions. There are a lot of different types of questions you can ask. So for example here, if we wanted to, you could click here, ask question. It could be a multiple choice. It could be a paragraph answer, a short answer, check boxes, drop downs. If you want to, you can allow them to actually upload a file or select things like date and time and all that kind of stuff. You can also do other things here, like you can add text, title, and description. I'll show you what that looks like. That would be like this little title here. Um, you can also do stuff like you could import questions if you want to. You could add an image. You could add a video. So you could do a video here just saying, hey, this is Sal um, with crowdcrux.com. We'd love to get your feedback on this survey. Thank you so much. Every single question that you answer is incredibly valuable to us. We'll be discussing all of the answers with our team. It's a completely anonymous survey. Thank you so much for taking five seconds to complete this, right? So you could do your own little video pitch here, um, or you could like add a section, like all this kind of stuff. So this would be, if you wanna have like page one be here and then page two be there, that would allow you to do that. So let's get into the specific questions. First of all, if you are leading up to the launch of a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign, you want to know how many of your backers are in your tribe um, are a familiar with Kickstarter or Indiegogo. So I ask for something like, for example, have you backed a Kickstarter campaign before? question mark. You can have multiple choice. So one could be here. Yes. And one could be here. No. Or you could do 
um, yes, I have um, more than 10 campaigns, or yes, I have more, one to five campaigns. You could, if you wanted to, have a, a gradation scale there. But for now, we're just going to have it be yes or no, and we're going to make this be a required question. So that way people have to answer this in order to progress to the next step. So next we can get into, okay, let's just say they have back to Kickstarter campaign before. You can also ask when it comes to the problem. So what is the problem here that this solves? This allows you to exercise in your home. It allows you to exercise and lose weight and cardio. So you could ask a question here, like what matters most to your fitness goals? And you could say, I want to burn fat. I want to become toned. I want to build muscle. Um, or something like, I want um, to work out easily in less time. And you could have that also if you want to be checkboxes. Let's just say they were checkboxes. So people could check multiple ones here and you could have an add an option or add other. So we'll just have that be required there, right? Um, what would be another one? So we talked a little bit about the problem. What's like, what's most important to you in terms of your fitness goals? We could ask if you want to, what about your results? What would make you happy? If I was to describe a scenario to you, let's just say like, you can get fit in the next 60 days by working out three times per week. It'll only take you 20 minutes. Does that sound exciting to you or not? And you could have like a gradation scale kind of similar to here. Like, yes, that would make me happy. Eh, that's okay. No, I would never do that, right? So you can you can hammer in a little bit more if you want to about the problem. The other thing we could do here would be a paragraph answer. So tell us specifically what other products have you tried to reach this goal? Example, ab machine, blah, 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 right? And maybe people then can tell you a little bit about the different products that they've already used in order to um, in order to address this. Now, depending on uh, what other you know products you're selling or the person you're going after, you could also ask more pointed questions here. Like for example, let's go to the multiple choice again. We'll say, um, how long have you been working out? One to three years. Zero. I'm a beginner, or three, maybe three to seven years, three to six years, six plus years. So this will give you some information because let's just say they say, I'm a beginner. A lot of the people are beginners. Well, they don't know anything about cardio. They don't know anything about burning fat, how that works, tracking your calories, etc. So they just want something like, I want the result. People who have been working out for more than six years, like myself, we are much more educated and they've probably tried a lot of other machines. So the marketing messaging might be different. You might be saying, have you been working out for years but um, failing to see results show up in your life? Have you been toiling away, working hard, but for some reason been unable to shed the fat um, around your midsection? Well, we've designed a completely new ab machine, the Fit Ab Machine 2000 which is designed to be used from the comfort of your home um, really quickly can start to take action in 20 minutes or less three times per week. You can start to see results within the next four weeks, right? So that would be one type of pitch. If you get a lot of people who reply and are like, I've been working out for a long time, that might be one type of pitch. Another pitch, if most people are absolutely your, your beginners, you might say something like, are you looking to shed body fat and get a six pack? Have you been, um, are you looking to tone your body and get fit for the summer months? The Fit Ab Machine 2000 is an absolute must. Um, if you've never been to a gym before because it's weird and because it's a little bit awkward, you can now work out in the fit, in the in the comfort of your own home get fit quickly using the fit ab machine 2000 it is perfect for beginners completely easy to get started you don't need to know anything about diet or nutrition you don't need to know anything about how to schedule a workout routine you will get all of that in our comprehensive fit ab machine uh, 2000 manual and our accompanying course all you got to do is show up three times per week for 20 minutes per day and you will have abs in no time by using the Fit Ab Machine 2000. Let us tell you a little bit more about it. You just kind of gather this data from people, and in that way, you can market to them more effectively. So what are some of the other things that you might want to know? Well, one of the other things might be, um, if I told you 
that you could get a six pack in, let's just say two months, so 60 days. How would that sound? And people could be like excited or no, nah, it's taking too long. You could have a long or a short answer. So you can get a sense of your market dimension there. Or you could say something like, um, what would you be willing to invest in a product like this? And because it could be a multiple choice. Now, I'm just kind of doing this really quickly here. I'd probably reword that one a little bit. Just say, would you be willing to invest $200? Would you be willing to invest $500? Would you be willing to invest $1,000? Um, and in that way, you're already getting people to think in the higher numbers here. Like it's not a hundred bucks. Like obviously, you know, you're getting them to already think about what is that going to be worth to them or how much money have you, here's another good one. How much money have you wasted on trying to hit your fitness goals? And that gets people thinking questions are a roadmap to thought where the more questions you ask, the more it causes people to focus on certain events in their life. And those events in their life produce certain emotions. So if I say to you, how much money have you wasted in your entire life trying to hit your fitness goals? Well, you have to do the math, but like, let's just say a gym membership is five, 50 bucks a month, right? If you're going in, if you're living in New York city or somewhere, so 50 bucks a month times a year, that's going to be at least, um, you know, so, uh, over 500 bucks, I'm not really good at math, $500, uh, $600 that you're wasting over the course of a year on a gym membership. And if you're working out, let's just say for three years and you still haven't gotten results, that's $1,800 that I have wasted trying to get results in my fitness life. And people will start to think about that and like, oh man, I'm actually throwing money down the toilet, right? If I spent 500 bucks and I had abs, I'd be like, that's, that's an incredible investment. Um, or 200 bucks, like that's even almost too good to be true. You know, same with a thousand, like, oh, that's basically what a gym membership is or thereabouts. So um, that could also get people thinking. Now, some other ideas for questions that you could have here, I do recommend having some open-ended questions, right? So we'd wanna have this be a paragraph. What made you want to, trans to get fit and transform your body? And what you'll find is people who are leaving long open-ended answers uh, to open questions are going to be very detailed and they're going to be telling you a story. So they might say, you know, dude, I've been the fat kid ever since I was 18 years old and um, I've been trying to lose weight and it really just hurts my dating life. It hurts my identity. It hurts my confidence. I really just want to lose 10 pounds even and feel just better about myself, feel more healthy, maybe have more vitality and in that way be able to live the kind of life that I've always dreamed to. Let's just say someone leaves that kind of an answer. Then you're like, wow, that's so awesome because now you can um, use some of that copy in your marketing and you can also use that to steer the direction of the ship, the direction of your team and the product. So what made you want to get fit and to transform your body? That could be a really good question. Um, I would recommend for the first survey that you do, keeping it to about six questions. Any more than six questions, people start to tune out a little bit, maybe seven. If it, one is like a really quick one, you can maybe do seven. But more than that, we risk people kind of wanting to like, eh, this is taking longer than I thought. And they should be really good questions that just hone in on um, the exact things that you want to know from your potential backers. Um, at the very longest, I would say seven, eight, right? Um, you can always do more surveys, but one easy way to um, begin to send this out, I'll send you, I'll, I'll cover that in just a second, but basically all you gotta do, let's just say that this is, this is the completed survey. Um, we basically have to select, do we want to collect email addresses? In this one, we do not. In this one, do we wanna to restrict to users within your own organization? I'm gonna uncheck that because that allows us to then share this survey with people even if they don't have a Gmail account. I'm also not gonna allow people to edit after they submit. We don't want them to see summary charts because uh, that's internal documentation. If we wanted to, we could limit to one response, but that would require us to select this also. Now, the cool thing would be if we wanted to, we could show a progress bar as they're going through this survey. We could shuffle the question order to see if that has any influence um, in these kinds of things. And, and finally, like a confirmation message there. And this, if we want to, we can make this a quiz, but that's not really you know related to what we're doing right now. So I'm just gonna save this. Then I'm gonna click send. I'm gonna click this URL, shorten document URL, copy this, close. And then I'm going to open an incognito tab and I'll show you exactly what this looks like. There we go. So we got this survey up and running. You could very easily send this 
via a email and um, people can answer this and you'll start to get some responses. And the cool thing with Google also is it will automatically um, create a spreadsheet um, for you that will gather all of these responses. And also it will um, create charts out of those uh, individual responses. So let's let, let me show you how to create this the spreadsheet. So you're just going to click create spreadsheet and you're going to name the spreadsheet. So I'm just going to say YouTube video sample customer feedback. So I remember what this is and I'll create. Now it opens the spreadsheet. This is a Google spreadsheet and there you go. It's going to automatically collect all of these replies. Now, just so you know, I'm not BSing you, right? <laughs> I'm going to show you what this looks like. So you go here, have you back to campaign before? I'll just say, yes. What matters most to me? I want to become, I want to build muscle. That's what I want to do. Um, tell us specifically what other products you've tried. I've tried um, Bowflex, traditional machine and a um, treadmill. How long have I been working out? I've been working out a while, actually. I think I've been about three to six years. How much have I invested trying to hit my fitness goals? Definitely more than a thousand. So I would probably have one of these options be like something plus, you know, a thousand plus. And what made me want to get fit and transform my body, level up my, I, my goals and become a better person and be more healthy, feel healthy. So I click submit, submit. Thank you for giving us feedback. And look at that. It automatically all synced up here in this Gmail spreadsheet, Google spreadsheet. And now let's go look at here. We got one response and it started to gather some of the data as it relates to that. So now you can go back and you can see this and discuss this with your team. Really useful, very interesting. And you discovered a, um, I think a practical way to start collecting information on your customers before you go live with a product or before you go live with a Kickstarter campaign or doing any other type of launch. This is gonna be really valuable for you. One other quick thing I wanted to cover is how to send this email to people so that you get responses from your Google form. Um, so this is basically how you would send the email. So the subject line, I'd recommend being very casual. Um, so let's just say something like, hey, um, this could be the person's name if you're using MailChimp or something like that. Would love your help. Or something like, can you help me with this? That subject is very informal, casual, and also trying to get, uh, try to show people that you need their help. That's fine. Something around that subject line would be amazing. Um, another one could be, if you're not using the hey, you could say something like, your feedback would mean so much. Another would be, the reason I write in green, by the way, is because I love the movie The Matrix, and um, they always have like green, black. That's really cool. Anyway, another subject would be, um, can I get your thoughts, dot, 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 dot. So those are the kind of subjects I would use to get opens. Then when it comes to the actual message body, you would say, hey, person's name, or just hey, if you want to, or you know, however you want to say that, something casual. Um, say thank you so much for your support up until this point i've um put together a short survey to get a better sense of the community i'm going to say anonymous actually short anonymous It would mean so much to me if you took the time to complete it. It will only take three minutes. We will, or I will, discuss all answers. So your feedback is very valuable. It will guide the direction that we take going forward with Ab Roller, Ab Machine 2000. Uh, the other thing, so the main thing is that I want to state that this is anonymous, right? Um, that's, I stated a little bit up here, anonymous survey. 
it means so much to just time completed. It only takes three minutes. So give a sense like it's really fast, like it's really rapid um, and something like that. And you could also say something like your feedback is valuable. People want to feel as though what they're saying is going to be meaningful. Like you don't want to just be like, it's going to go into this random Google spreadsheet that no one is ever going to look at, right? You want it to feel like people are actually going to read your responses and use that and they're going to discuss it with the team so they can make something better for you at the end of the day. So that's what they're getting out of it. Um, so I would probably stress again that this is going to be anonymous. So I would say here, we really value your time. Thank you. So uh, I, might, I would probably add in like one more line here. I'd probably actually put this up here. Hope you've been having a great week thus far. The reason why I add that kind of a line is just so people know it's not like an automated message. Um, it's more personal, right? So we could say this here and then we would insert the link to the survey, put this here. There's a short link you could get if you want to, but I would just insert it there. That could be a very simple message. You could maybe add a, you know, a sentence or two to it to lengthen it a bit, but something along those lines is good enough just to get some responses in terms of percentage wise. If you have maybe 500 subscribers on the email list or 500 fans and followers, you could probably get at least 10% of them um, to give you an answer to the survey, maybe more. Depends on how engaged your following is. But um, this is a really great way to collect information leading up to a, uh, a Kickstarter, Indiegogo campaign, or an upcoming product launch. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give me a thumbs up. Come subscribe to this YouTube channel. Leave a comment down below if you got a question. And also, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. So if you're interested in having a trained eye assess your campaign, you want my direct feedback on your particular products, on what you're trying to do, or you wanna work with me in a larger capacity, having me help you with your marketing, you can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. Go and check out the links in the description. Also, I have a free course on Kickstarter you can check out in the description that goes step-by-step -step through how to launch a successful Kickstarter campaign. Uh, I've got a free weekly newsletter and a bunch of other stuff. I got a cool podcast out there on iTunes as well. All the links for that are in the description. Go and check them out after you watch this video. Thank you so much. My name is Salvador Brigman, and I will see you next time.